So the basic elements of seed starting are simple. Soil, something to hold the soil, water, light, and seeds. I use potting soil. I know you can get um, seed starting mixes that are usually finer textured and include more sand. Um, but potting soil has always worked well for me and I'm not about to change that now. I can also usually find potting soil quite easily and in bulk, which is very helpful for me. As far as vessels go, I have saved every pot that I've ever purchased a plant in from a greenhouse or a garden center. But I also decided I'd show you how I would make use of some aluminum trays that you can get pretty cheap. You can probably find them at dollar stores and stuff like that. And the simple humble plastic cup. I prefer plastic because um, it does a better job of retaining moisture than a lot of the natural fiber or um, bag type, like the, the peat pots, uh, the, the jiffy pods and things like that. I find I have a harder time maintaining an even moisture content in those. Um, now, if you are going to use plastic cups like this, I do highly recommend that you put holes in the bottom and then put it in a tray. Um, and I did that. This is gonna be a horrendous noise, so I'm not gonna talk while I do this and then I'll turn the volume down on the video. But I'm just using a corkboard pin And now you can see there are holes in the bottom of this cup. So when I put it in a tray and I fill the bottom of that tray with water, it can absorb water from the bottom up. Um, and when you have a tray full of cups, it's much easier to maintain the moisture level in all of them if you can water from the bottom instead of watering from the top, especially if it's something like tomatoes where the top is gonna to get quite full because then you're not trying to navigate around all the plants. So if you're going to plant into a tray, um, having drainage and water absorption holes in the bottom is ideal. You can grow in things like these. Um, one thing you could do is you could have a bottom tray for watering and then you could put holes in a second tray, punch holes in this one, and nestle it in. And then you can just add water to the bottom tray, being careful not to overflow of course in order to bottom water if you wanted to grow plants to a larger size in containers like this. Um, I'm just going to be germinating a bunch of seeds in here and then they'll get pricked out into separate containers. And pricking out is basically just when you've taken um, a thickly seeded area and you pull the, the tiny plants apart and put them in separate pots. That's what that's called. Um, and I prefer to do that for really small seeded things. Water and light are fairly self-explanatory. I just use tap water. Um, that's always been fine. I've never had a problem with that. And I have some really beautiful, um, bright south-facing windows here in the Northern Hemisphere. If you want a south-facing window, basically whatever window you can get the most direct sunlight through um, that's possible. So let's start some seeds. Take my tray, fill it dirt. Now this dirt is actually fairly dry right now. And um, because I'm not going to be able to bottom water this, and I am planning on seeding some small seeds, these um, herb seeds over here, into here, I'm actually just going to take this over to the sink and I'll take you with me. So this tap has a um, shower faucet. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it on really low, a little bit lower than that, so I get a gentle rain. And you can water seedlings like this um, as long as they're not surface sown. If you have surface sown seedlings and you water them from the top like this, they uh, do tend to get washed deeper into the soil if they're really tiny seeds, um, and that can prevent germination, because surface sown seeds need the sunlight to germinate. So 
So I'm just going to get this really nice and saturated. Alright, so we're ready to seed. I'm going to be seeding a couple types of basil, as well as thyme, and some chamomile. These are my seeds. And I've got a nice wide tray here, so I'm just going to flatten that out a little bit. not terribly fussy. Now in this case, because the thyme and the chamomile look very different from the basils, and I'm not concerned about keeping the basil separate from each other, I'm not actually going to use um, plant markers. But if you've never grown a specific variety of something before, it's a good idea to use a label um, so that you can keep it distinct so you know what you're looking at, especially when you're planting out. These are all things that I'm quite familiar with. So time says surface sew. Now for surface sewing, I'm going to actually just press this a little bit so that the top is nice and smooth. Because if it's really coarse, then, of, then the, um, the seeds are gonna just fall. And as you can see, these are really, really tiny seeds. Don't need that many. Um, what I do sometimes is um, I always have a dedicated tweezer that I use for seeding. So since these are so small, I'm just going to actually press my finger to the seeds and just press that into the soil. And they'll have some good contact with the moist soil and that's all that they need. These are plant tags from last year. And I'm just going to be using that to create little divisions. So that's the time. I'm going to do some purple basil. Now these, I think, are all free seeds and they never tell me how to start these, but I'm just going to... Basil's kind of not difficult to grow. Let's sprinkle that on top. These are slightly larger seeds. If you're planting into individual pots, you can use tweezers or just plant two or three per pot. And I think these ones want a little bit of soil on top. Going to sprinkle a little bit of dirt, firm that down so it'll absorb the extra moisture, and then I was going to try this one. This is a new variety for me this year. It came in my free seed pack, Blue Spice. It's supposed to have a heavy fragrance with spicy vanilla overtones, which I think would be lovely in a bouquet as a filler. I'm planting maybe 15 seeds. I expect they'll probably all come up. Just like that. Again, put a little bit of soil on top. Seed starting can be really simple, but it can also get really complicated. So I wanted to just start at a very basic beginner level. See, this says to sow thinly about, through, about a quarter inch deep. And these seeds are again, very small. Um, so I'm going to not sow that many, but this is still probably 
30 or 40 seeds in here at least. Just going to spritz them like it's salt. But not quite that thick. Sprinkle it like salt when you're on a sodium, low sodium diet. All right. And again, we cover that in soil. And you'll often read um, depth recommendations. So this one said quarter inch deep. I'm not particularly concerned. Quarter inch just says to me, a decent covering of earth. So a little bit, I'm not measuring, I'm not worrying about it. If it ends up being a sixth or a little more than a quarter in some spots, I'm fine with that. It'll still grow, it'll be fine. And this can go in a windowsill. So that's the basics of seed starting. Of course, we can improve on many of these elements to improve the quality, the growth habit, and germination rates of our seedlings. So let's start with talking about lighting. I use supplemental lights for almost all of my seedlings from for the first two weeks after they germinate. This just helps them to grow really dense and nice and tight from the base up, and that creates a more compact, healthier plant um, to, to put out in the garden in the first place. I also like to grow things like tomatoes and peppers under grow lights for as long as I possibly can until I can get them outside because they are known for growing quite leggy and uh, I want a nice dense branch structure on the tomatoes and peppers and I also want them to have nice thick stems and if they grow really leggy they tend to be really floppy and more fragile, especially when you put them outside and they get um, used to wind and things like that. If you can't afford um, or you don't want to shell out for the expensive grow lights, you can buy individual bulbs that are um, full spectrum bulbs that are designed for growing that fit into your regular lamps and things like that. So you can use those, just be careful that they will get rather hot so you don't want to them too close to your plants. Um, you don't want to burn them, of course. You can also use things like tin foil to create your own reflectors so that your, your plants get light from both sides. This is a cheap way of um, improving the light quality around your young seedlings. You could use something like a foil pan or just a cardboard box with some foil taped over it, and you're just trying to match the angle of the sun. So if the angle is coming here, you want to angle your foil, and you can usually see this if you set this up during the daytime while the sun is shining directly into your window, it'll hit here and it'll bounce off here. So if this is where your plant tray is, then your plants will be receiving a little bit of extra light. It's not going to be the same intensity and quality of the light from outside, but it is going to help improve um, legginess and it's going to help improve the turning that the plants do when they don't get enough sunlight, or even enough sunlight. A little aside on that topic, why do plants turn and bend towards the light? There's actually a hormone inside of a plant. And on the sunny side, it's, it's a growth hormone. And on the sunny side, there are chemical triggers, essentially, that turn off that growth hormone. So the sunny side of the plant doesn't grow as fast as the shady side of the plant, which still has that hormone being activated. And therefore that side grows longer and longer and that bends the whole plant towards the sunlight. Heat. Now, I use a heat pad, uh, a seedling heat mat, that um, I only have the one, really I should have more than one. But I have the one and I put it under um, when I'm germinating peppers and tomatoes and anything where a higher um, temperature is required for germination. This will often be stated at the back of the package. Uh, if you don't have information about a particular thing that you're growing, a quick Google search should show you if you just type in the variety of seed germination temp and it'll pop right up for you. Um, 
it's a really quick way to tell if your room temperature is warm enough. A windowsill can be warmer than the rest of your room as long as there's not a draft. If you have a radiator style heater below a window, that might be a good place to, to start certain seeds um, just because it's just going to be a few degrees warmer. Additional heat is not necessary for most things. And in fact, things like tomatoes and peppers and the pumpkins that I always put on the heat mat, they don't need it to germinate, but their germination rates will be faster. So as an example, this year I seeded my tomatoes, I think last Sunday, and by Thursday they were beginning to sprout, to germinate, to, to sprout above the ground. So that's about a four or five day germination rate, and that's really, really good. They would still germinate at room temperature, but it would probably take closer to two weeks. Things with a really big seed, like pumpkins, um, will often germinate within three or four days with supplemental heating. But they will germinate, just albeit at a much slower rate, at room temperature. And as you will have seen in my seedling vlog yesterday, I do have a little plastic tent over one of my shelving units. And with the lighting in there and with the seedling heat mat underneath one of those trays, it does get warmer in there. And of course, it's also trapping additional heat from the sun. So that um, tent is warmer than the ambient temperature of my home. And that is also helping to germinate things more quickly. Additional things you might want to consider in your setup are things like air movement. As I was saying with peppers and tomatoes, tomatoes especially, if they have a really, really thin stem when they go outside, they're much more prone to being whipped off in the wind um, or to having trouble um, really getting going once they're planted out. One of the ways you can subvert that is by adding supplemental air movement while they're still inside. I do this with a standing fan that I can turn on and it'll oscillate and it'll just give them a gentle breeze. And because they're moving and they're fighting and they're vibrating against that wind, they build stronger and thicker stems. If you don't have a fan, the other thing you can do is you can just run your hands over the tops of them on a fairly regular basis, say they're planted somewhere you walk past, just every time you walk past, just run your hand across the top of the foliage to give them a little bit of that air movement and moving of their stems. I also recommend using a fan to prevent things like damping off, which is a fungal disease that occurs in human environments that will kill otherwise ordinary, ordinarily healthy looking plants. So if you notice that your plants look good and they're coming up and then they just seem to die off, especially if they die off right at the root and you and they just sort of fall over and you realize that the, the bottom end where it was meet, meeting the soil has sort of shriveled up. That's usually caused by damping off and the solution to that is to immediately get more air movement around your plants. If they're under a cover or if they're in an encapsulated space to open that up to get the air moving to let the surface of the soil dry it a little bit more. That will help to prevent damping off. Um, of course, you can use things to help germinate. Uh, in the beginning of this video, we put seeds in this here tray, and this one here is surface sown. One of the things you can do to improve the germination rate of a surface sown seed, ensuring that your soil isn't too dry, is to use um, something preferably clear, like, say, a Ziploc, and just laying it over top of the soil where the seeds are. Um, that way the seeds stay evenly moist. Now I've watered this quite extensively and it's going to stay wet for a good long time. And so I'm not going to do that. Um, but if your soil is a little bit dry, that can be your solution. Some seeds will also say to germinate in the dark or to exclude light. All you need to do there is put a little piece of aluminum foil on top of the seeds where they're sown and then check under it every day to make sure they're not germinating. As soon as they're germinated, you take the foil off. You might also notice that you have 
pest problems when you're starting seeds. You might notice little flies that sort of look like fruit flies, but they're black. Those are a type of fungus gnat and they sow their eggs in damp soil and the larva will actually eat plant roots and then they'll come up out of the soil and they'll fly around and they'll be a nuisance. One thing you can do to combat that is to make sure that your soil isn't staying too damp for too long. Um, you can flush the soil using a 5 to 1 ratio of peroxide and water, um, which will kill larva and eggs in the soil. You can use little sticky traps. And I also recommend if you're battling with fungus gnats to flush a cleaning solution down all of your drains because they will often live in the, um, in the drains and um, anywhere that moisture is collected as well. So that can help to really combat those. Uh, onions can be quite prone to thrips. I do not have any thrips inside, but I have noticed that there are thrips in the onions out in the greenhouse. And I'm going to be using Endol's, uh, Safer's Endol um, insecticidal soap. It's completely safe to use and it will not harm the plants and it will kill both thrips and aphids. And I have noticed some aphids on my sweet potato plants, which is very annoying and frustrating, but I am slowly getting the better of them by checking on them every day and treating them whenever I see aphids on the leaves. If you've been looking into seed starting for any period of time, you've heard probably multiple various opinions on different types of plant pots. And I guess here's one more opinion to add to the list. I prefer plastic. I know plastic is not the most renewable um, resource, but I do know that this cup is going to last me many, many years before it breaks so much that I can no longer use it. So I'm trying to keep the plastic that I do use to grow my plants in use for as long as possible. Unfortunately, a lot of the environmentally friendly varieties of pots are not as effective at managing moisture, mold, and other elements of plant growing. The peat pots, um, the compressed cow manure pots, the coir pots, both uh, dry out really rapidly and will actually dry the soil out with them. And in my quite dry um, environment, it's very difficult to manage the moisture of the soil effectively. And so the seedlings suffer. I've also noticed that they do not break down within the year, um, which means that even though your roots may be growing through those things, they're still being somewhat restricted by the pots and you still have to pull the pots out of the garden the next year and take care of them. And for me, that's an extra step I'd prefer not to do. I have used, and I do like these, uh, little fabric pots. I would prefer if they were made of a less synthetic material. Um, I do like about these that the roots will grow through them quite easily. But again, I do find that they're still left in the garden um, in the next season. And so I tend to cut these away um, and remove them before I plant things out just for the ease of use. Um, but because these can be squished nice and tight to each other, um, they're not bad at starting things, but they're not the most effective and they are a bit of a pain to fill because it's a very loose shape, you can't scoop, and it's just a bit of a difficult task to fill them effectively. They do stand sort of on their own. Uh, the wider ones do stand on their own and that's all right. Um, so I have, and I will use these for more things, but I will um, remove the wraps before I put them out in the garden. And I found that with most of the things that come in a little wrap or that they, they say that you can plant the whole thing out, I would still recommend removing those um, containers because I do find that it does restrict roots and you do find them in the garden in the next year. I'd rather take them off and put them in the composting to hopefully break down before they go into the garden. I don't normally use 
um, plastic cups. Usually I have enough leftover reused pots um, from previous years that I don't need to, but this year because I'm doing a plant sale, I was trying to think of a way that I... So I don't normally use plastic cups. This year because I'm doing a plant sale, I was trying to think of an effective way to give away plants. And while I could buy a whole bunch of these pots in bulk, um, this was much cheaper and easier to get. And it has the added benefit of me being able to label the side so I don't need a bajillion plant tags to keep the different varieties of peppers and tomatoes separate. So that's why I'm using some of these this year. Um, I'm hoping that they can be reused by whoever gets them and that they will be, but of course I can't control that. But finding the size and shape of pots that I would need um, would have required buying them online and I just buying plastic either way I might as well get something that's easier and a little bit cheaper because I don't want to make the plants so expensive that people can't afford to buy them from me. So I think that pretty much covers everything I know and utilize in starting seeds for myself. Um, basically just talking about germination and basic equipment to do that, we can get more into seedling care and treatment, um, especially when it comes to things like hardening off and planting out and things like that in another video some other time. Thank you for watching and I hope you got something useful out of it. Did you learn anything new? Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, please let me know in the comments down below. Alright guys, thanks for watching. We'll see ya.